Okay, it records. Uh, the crypt had is in the notes. If you're here, please put your name on the attendees list. If you have a update for this week, um, please add it to the bottom of the pad uh, for a synchronous review. So people can see what you're up to. We won't go through everything you've been working on. Uh, but if you have uh, initiatives or big, big projects and things that are not listed in the initiatives, then please feel free to add them and we uh, will do a quick update on those. All right, so let's get this party started. It is the IPFS core implementations weekly sync. It is January the 20th today. Woo, January is zooming past. Uh, let's go through the uh, initiatives. First up, we have uh, upcoming slash shipped releases. Uh, Stephen, you have an update for Go IPFS. Uh, yep, uh, 0 0.4.23 patch release, RC1 is built. It was supposed to be up by this meeting, but I'm, I still need to get some sign offs uh, to be up imminently. Nice. Uh, the update for me is that the CI for JS IPFS 041 is now green. The, all of our tests are, uh, are passing for browsers, for Mac OS, for Linux. Um, Alex has got the majority of the examples tests passing, so that's awesome as well. Uh, I'm currently working on just getting interop straightened out, and then we will be good to go. So hopefully a RC this week. Um, sorry for the delay. Next up, we have uh, upgrading testing infra slash process. Uh, Lido, would you like to? I was not sure where, where to put uh, my update, so I've put it when, under like tests. Uh, I've added uh, regression tests uh, from uh, JS, uh, oh gosh, uh, from IPFS web UI repo. Um, those tests are end to end tests in a real Chromium br web browser. Uh, just making sure you can like add files to IPFS using web interface. Uh, and it tests a lot of stuff, including HTTP client, uh, JS IPFS, Go IPFS, in the rep repo itself. Uh, so I just re reused uh, those end-to-end -end tests and added them to existing CI uh, in Go repo and in JS repo. That means now when you make a change in Go IPFS or JS IPFS, one of tests that needs to pass in your PR our regression test against uh, IPFS web UI. So that's pretty useful thing to have if someone breaks something that would like make it impossible to upload uh, files via web UI. We don't, uh, like we will immediately notice that, uh, not when web UI switches to the new version. So that should save us a lot of headache at some point. And vice versa. When web UI updates, we can make sure it still works with the current version of JS IPFS and Go IPFS. Yep. Brad, these are cool PRs. Thank you so much. I need to look at these as soon as possible. Uh, any other up, uh, testing or infra or, or process updates that people would like to give? All righty, let's move on. Uh, content routing. Any anyone available to update here? Uh, yes, uh, I know uh, Adin has been working on this. Wait, is Adin here? Let me just give the update. Adin. Oh no, he stopped today. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So Adin's working this. I talked to him a lot on Friday. Um, uh, he has a work in progress patch locally. It massively simplifies the code uh, and appears to do the right thing. Uh, he's going to be heading over to Rivendell on uh, actually tomorrow, I guess, I think. Uh, and then we're going to pair on this and uh, try to push it forward. So maybe we're specifically describing what he's doing there. Um, it's implementing disjoint paths, right? And uh, Multiple things. So yeah, uh, disjoint paths, uh, implementing like the correct GitHub and query logic. He's actually making it pluggable, so you can have like three different like or multiple different like query logic uh, or multiple different because like there are different ways of actually implementing GitHub. It's not like paper describes it sort of, but there are different optimizations you can apply. 
uh, I say try to make it so you can just like plug in a new query function and like, try it out different things. Uh, it also gets rid of things like the dial queue and stuff like that and like uh, it makes it much, much simpler. And I believe it should be just as good uh, as the current code. Um, like the current code has this like, yeah, but uh, we don't have to get into that. But basically, this is the first step uh, of just like basically fixing Kademlia to make it actually, or the CAD DHT to make it actually do what Kademlia says to do. Uh, the next step is to then start optimizing a bunch of other things to like, try to make everything faster. Uh, uh, I also saw a, I think Raul was posting about a, um, like the, the overall plan for content routing and uh, when that might be available is not ready yet, but it's coming soon. Did anyone else see that? Yeah, I think there might be a technical plan published publicly uh, sometime next week, hopefully. Okay. Uh, hopefully sooner, I'll talk about that. Or at least an internal thing. Okay, that would be rad. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, all right, moving on then, subdomain gateway. Uh, Lido, do you have any updates here? Uh, yeah, just like a short update uh, that I finally started this work. And I'm, I started it from the end, so I'm writing docs first just to validate that the things that we assume make sense may actually make sense so i, I i've been mostly like drafting uh, uh those config docs for go ipfs repo and uh, like listing some like how would config look like for those common use cases that we want to support uh don't like look at uh, the variable names we'll probably change them like three times before it's ready but it's like uh, the approach I want to uh, do here is to ensure we don't like create too convoluted configuration. So I think the thing that's already on the PR, uh, I had think with Steven and kind of too complex already. I want to like dumb it down, make it even simpler. Uh, so more updates on that next week, I guess. Nice, you're doing readme driven development and I approve of this. Uh, yeah, no, you should always start at this end. If, if this is the end or the beginning, it should be the beginning. Um, any questions for Lido on that? This is essentially what, what he's, just to summarize that, the, um, for the people who are watching, um, the, this is configuration for, like if you're setting up a gateway, if you want to run it as a gateway that resolves um, resolves paths path-based gateways, so like ipfs.io slash ipfs slash hash, or if you want it to be a um, like hash.ipfs.io gateway. So it's resolving it as a subdomain. Um, and then like what domains you actually want it to be um, working on and stuff like that. And so it's configuration allowing you to set up your um, go ipfs or JS ipfs node as a, uh, in, as a gateway in your own, like for yourself um, in, in your own way. and. Uh, making that configuration nice and easy and simple. Is that fair? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, all right, uh, subdomain gateway, if there's no questions on that, then we'll move on to distributed signaling. Still holding? Yeah, it's on hold, but hopefully uh, next couple of weeks as the refactor is finishing up. Okay, IPNS, so Edin, and is Hugo here today, or is there any updates on this for? No. IPNS no. this week. Okay. Adding performance. Is there any updates here from anyone? Uh, I don't think so. The in progress thing here was uh, Badger 2. Uh, but it needs primary focus at the moment. Hi. Uh, so the, I've been looking at improving pinning performance, um, restoring pins in the data store. Um, and my update here is that I discovered that the muscle memory for locking your keypad on a laptop is not the same as uh, on a keyboard. <laughs> if you do it on a on a key on your laptop, it actually ends up quitting the web browser that you have open, which uh, happened to have my proposal for uh, the write of my proposal for the pinning performance in it. So that was really nice. Uh, I will rewrite that this week. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, it browsers. Great. I'm pretty. Is that why Chrome switched to like having to hold down Command Q? Yeah, and I switched to Brave. Like, you know, no distributed person should be running. Yes, I. Yeah, I agree. Hey, I'm Firefox only. Uh, all right. Anyway, that's aside. Um, the migration to multi hash keys in the block store on the JS side still on hold because we're still focusing on getting async await out the door. Uh, and apparently, Go still needs a migration to be written for this change. But everything else is in place, right? Uh, we think. Most things are in place, probably. Yes. Excellent. OK, uh, so that's that. Um, <clears throat> BitSwap updates. Dirk, you have an update here. Uh, yeah, so last week I've been working on a test suite in TestGround. So I want to get to the point where uh, we can test out a few different kinds of environments, like a data center, internet style, or an internet kind of environment, uh, just so we have confidence when we're making uh, releases of BitSwap. Uh, so yeah, it's probably going to take me another week or so. But uh, making progress. Nice. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you said this last time, but uh, your pull request to get uh, the test ground outputting logs to a file got merged, mergerized. So you can now inspect all of the logs from all the test grounds. Which is good news. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, so the next up is async await stuff. I haven't written an update here, but Jacob, would you like to update us on libp 2 p Yeah, we are. There were some issues with the browser examples. Um, I was actually hitting issues that other folks weren't uh, because I didn't have some of the bootstrap node intermediary certificates. Um, Ollie was tackling those and I think everything is starting to look much, much better. So I've got uh, the browser example is almost done. I revamped it because it was kind of annoying and crappy. And so it should be better um, now. So I'm just finishing that up, a few PRs for that. And then I'm gonna redo the, um, do final pass on the getting started guide. And then I think we have one bug with PubSub in libp2p interop. Um, I should be able to uh, get that fixed and hopefully tomorrow. And then I think we should be hopefully good to release sometime later this week. Fingers crossed. Hooray. Yeah, I, so OK, the interesting thing there is that JSIVFS, all of that stuff is done, but I'm working on the interrupt tests. And so uh, today I had running the exchange files interrupt tests, so, which is basically round, round trip for libp 2 b you know, establishing connections, SecIO, uh, sending files, receiving them, um, uh, all, all of the P2B stuff, and it works. And um, what I was seeing on my laptop was that between the current version and this version, we have like things are faster, and when the file is bigger, uh, things are a lot faster. So. At the moment, we have this problem where we've got this kind of exponential uh, s slowness curve, where as you add bigger files, things get slower and slower. Uh, but now it's more, it's way more linear. So as you, well, it's kind of a constant. Um, you can say that like JSIPFS is like ten times slower, but it's not like ten times slower when uh, when it's got a, a you know, one meg file and then a hundred thousand times slower when you've got a hundred meg file. It's like ten times slower, whatever. Um, so there's there's a constant there, and so that makes me feel a lot better about um, the the um, performance because it seems like there's there's some like constant thing that we need to just eradicate, and then um, we can bring that down. So uh, things are already faster, according to the tests on my laptop. But we shall see as I finish off the interrupt tests and start running it in CI. So um, in those particular examples, uh, things are looking good. So that's cool. And that's the kind of async await update I have for JS IPFS, other than like we're, we're getting there, we're slowly getting there, and interop is happening. Yes, Dirk. 
when you said transferring a file, is that uh, just like directly over the P2P transport? Yeah, I, so this is these are tests that test between Go to Go and Go to JS and JS to JS. Uh, I think they're all done over, it's either TCP or WebSockets. I can't remember quite, it's probably TCP. Um, in the browser, there'll be WebSockets. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty limited tests. I realize, but just saying, compared to the ones that were running earlier, they are better. <laughs> So, all right, that's that. Uh, let's, if anyone else, no one else has any questions, we'll move on. Cool, okay, UnixFS 1.5, is there any updates there? Uh, Alex or Peter? Um, I managed a PR that adds um, support for Dash. Uh, special permissions to CH mod, uh, also doing recursive CH mod operations over trees in the NFS. Can you add, can you write that update? Because I lost you. Yeah, I lost times. the first part of that sentence. Sure. Also. And seeing as I'm recording, it's probably lost for everyone. <laughs> okay, uh, right. No, I've lost the window with the things in it. Okay, um, cool, uh, cool. Uh, Peter, stream stream content based junking research improvements. Yes. So uh, I spent pretty much the entire uh, last week uh, getting together a tool that uh, allows me to modify all parameters that we know of uh, for to basically produce a CID out of a predefined stream. Uh, I'm almost, almost, almost ready with that tool, but it's not quite there yet. Uh, it's growing more and more options uh, every 20 minutes, but I think I have gotten it to its final state, still fleshing out the, 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 the final CLI um, interface for it and hoping to have it ready by tomorrow evening or Wednesday at the latest and then I will proceed uh, working off of Dirk's uh, uh, work till now on uh, with uh, test ground to test how long does it take us to actually uh, add and cut back uh, more blocks than we normally do for larger files and for small amount of checking to basically have a have an idea of what timings we are dealing with. And that's where I am. Cool. Uh, and so once you have the stats that uh, from the tool, what is the what's the plan? Uh, the, uh, the plan is to uh, write up a write write all of this up into a preliminary. This is what looks about right, and then the plan after that is to let this thing run uh, continuously over what seems interesting and see basically what what falls out. Uh, that's why the pre preparatory um, work to be able to run an experiment as fast as possible, more or less. Um, I also discovered some problems uh, as I was uh, going, uh, you know, through through that uh, with JSIPFS and GoIPFS, which not agreeing on add output with exactly the same parameters on on the CLI add command. So I'm going to be writing this up a little bit later today. And yeah. Cool. Um yeah that that's super interesting then um i assume we would either change defaults to be to reflect the the best uh best mm, dials or create no. new oh, oh oh you mean uh, you mean after my work uh it's uh, so we definitely will look at different defaults because there are things that we could be doing that we're not doing right now, like uh, before doing any kind of uh, size or content defined change or anything like that. Uh, look for uh, any kind of padding 
like uh, eight or 16 or more identical bytes. Uh, and only after that do everything else that, we, that we're doing right now, which uh, gives a completely different picture of how different parts of files are being found within within larger streams like a tar file or, or a dev archive or whatever we have. Uh, so yes, the, the result will definitely be a new set of options, whether they're going to be defaults or not, that's kind of a question for February, I guess. Yep, so, the, so the goal was really to make a new chunker. Um, uh, it's kind of like the ultimate content or like content-based chunker, or sorry, the ultimate general purpose content-based chunker. Uh, then switching this to the default is probably going to come along with switching a bunch of other things to the default. We've discussed several times having like a uh, like a, an importer's version kind of thing, or like you can specify import version zero, which is the current system import or importer version one, which would be like all the nice features we have right now sort of turned on, and importer version two would be like that plus Unix FS two and all that kind of stuff uh, that we use. This could just like say, okay, like I'm going to sort of like checkpoint use this version. Um, yeah, I was thinking. Cool. I like it. Let's make the ultimate general purpose content chunker. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, enough of that. Uh, design review proposals. Nothing in there at the moment. Anyone want to add something last minute? All right. Uh, blockers and or asks. Does anyone have a block or <laughs> need to ask something? <laughs> Questions, okay. Ollie Evans, you have a question. I just you wonder. I don't. I don't think I've seen this list of endeavors change very often. Uh, now might be a good time to review the list with the ruthless focus on content resolution speed. Mm -hmm. And just as a quick pass, I thought maybe distributed signaling, IPNS, and migration to multi hash keys and blocks might all be endeavors you might consider pruning <laughs> with to so, open more floor floor time to content resolution and anything blocking it. Yeah, uh, here I've been uh, like, we've been waiting for the, like, the finish the plan uh, for content resolution. So we actually have a set of tasks like, okay, and these are the, this is the burn down list. Uh, I'll talk to world later on today to like figure out what we can do to like, like ship at least an early version of that ASAP. Uh, in terms of like removing different tasks, uh, like actually I recently added the uh, migration thing. Um, primarily because it's something we kind of like to squeeze into 0 0.5.0 for a bunch of other reasons. Um, but yeah, it's a low priority, uh, which may not really even belong here. Uh, yeah, it's mostly there just in case someone has time to pick it up and they can take it forward. If it doesn't get into the release, it's not the end of the world, it's just a bit annoying. Um, but yes, we definitely need to go through this list and say, like, figure out which things really need to happen right now and which things probably aren't as important. Uh, it was more. It was mostly yeah. to like al align the list of things we talk about each week with. Yeah, definitely, they're the most important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove. Well, okay. Yeah, we should probably remove. Yeah, IPNS ad performance is probably not as important at the moment. Uh, migration to voltage keys. Yeah, we don't. There's no re real reason to actually keep this on the list. It's kind of a back burner thing that might happen. That we can have like an ad hoc update. Um, uh, bit swap updates. That's an in progress thing. We kind of want to land. Uh, ASIC await, obviously. Uh, Unix fs 1.5. Um, yeah, it's an in progress thing. Uh, but a lot of these priorities will change once we actually have the plan and we can start like putting people in different tasks, but we don't really have it yet. Yep, that sounds fine. I mean, it was more a, nu a nudge to prompt no, no, conversation. Thank you. I think it would be a good idea to maybe prioritize the ones we're actively working on and have a sort of backlog. Uh, yeah. Area where we can just quickly skim through and just say anyone working on this or, or is it still on hold and um, we could just quickly do that yeah, at the end rather than actually idea. having to uh, go through the rigmarole of getting someone to tell us that it's on hold. Um, cool. Uh, all right. Thank you for suggesting that. Let's do it. Um, all right. Uh, so did we get to the end? We did get to the end. Um, unless there's anything else anyone else wants to say whilst we're recording. <laughs> uh, 
All right, cool. Uh, we are on time. Thank you all for coming to the JS IPFS uh, core implementations meetup. And I will see you next week. Uh, have a lovely time. Bye-bye. Goodbye now.